Honors Algebra, Mr. Lawrence here with your flip lesson for what it is today. It's hard to tell with the day off we had this week, Thursday, February 8th. Uh, by the way, if any of your moms and dads are listening and they voted to support the renewal levy, please let me thank them personally. Um, thank you very much for your support. Uh, it's tough economic times and oh, it makes it so much harder when we don't have the support of the parents. I'm so glad that we do. Anyway, thank you. All right, back to the problem. If your parents didn't hear that, you can go ahead and relay that message for me. All right, uh, we need to do some word problems. Yeah, some story problems involving um, quadratic equations, and we'll solve them by factoring. All right, let's take a look at one here. Let's say, close shade. The shade will not close. All right, go away then. Okay, the first one is the product of twice a number and two more than the number is 160. What is the number? Well, let's see here. I know the number is x because I don't know what it is, right? But I need twice a number. Let me put an a in there because I'm sure Andrew will, Andrew will tell me about that. That's the product of twice a number and two more. So twice a number, that would be 2x, wouldn't it? All right. Some of you might like to use n. I need product, so I know I'm going to multiply this 2x by something. I need two more than the number. Well, that would be x plus 2. The product of these two numbers is 160. Remember, is means equals, right? Okay. Well, this is just like last night's homework, except first I'm going to distribute 2x squared plus 4x equals 160. And then Matt Bliznik can tell you that, well, Mr. Lawrence, we want it to equal 0 so that we can factor and solve. So we'll subtract 160 from each side. And when I do that, I'll get 2x squared plus 4x minus 160. I'll, tell, I'll bet you that Jewel can tell you that uh, you don't need to, uh, you don't put the 4x and the 160 together because they're not like terms. All right, hold on, I got a new problem creeping into my work. Let me get rid of it. Go away. All right, so now I'm ready to factor. Uh, first type of factoring I'm always going to try, G, oh, that's not a G, GCF. So I'm going to pull out a 2. X squared plus 2X minus 80 equals 0. Yeah, you don't have to pull that 2 out, but it'll make my numbers easier to deal with. Now, this is really an easy factor, okay? Since the lead coefficient here is a 1, right? See the 1 in front of the X squared? All I need are two factors of 80 that subtract to get 2. Well, you know, 10 minus 8? Yeah, I didn't even have to list them all. So I'm going to need a positive 10 and a negative 8. That all equals 0. Well, now you just solve it. Oops, went too far there. Sorry about that. Okay, so I take this quantity, x plus 10, equal to 0. Solve for x, and I will get x equals negative 10. That is one possible answer, and we'll check that in a minute. Or x minus 8 equals 0, x equals positive 8. So actually, that's the complete answer there. x can be either of those two numbers. Well, let's test it. We know that we have to double the number and then multiply by two more. So let's try it with negative 10. Let's check it right here. Check. Check, check, check. All right. So I'm going to double it. So I'm going to get negative 20. And I need two more than negative 10. That would be negative 8, right? 20 times 8 is 160. And negative times a negative is a positive. And there you go. It checks. Now let's check it with the 8. All right, I'm going to double it and get 16. Two more than 8 is 10. That equals 160. And it checks again. So it works. Pretty simple. By the way, if there had been an, a variable here, right here, I would have had three possible answers. Like if that had been 2x times the quantity, you know, x plus 10 and x minus 8 equals 0, I would have to do three answers, 
okay? But there's no variable here. 2 can never equal 0 by itself, so I don't have to do that. All right, that's just a little side note. Okay, let's look at this problem here. Uh, you're going to completely enclose a rectangular yard with 150 feet of fencing. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle. And by the way, I am a wonderful rectangle drawer. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Do you like my yard? Isn't it beautiful? I've been working hard on that. Okay, so uh, I've got too many things in the way. Can't see what's going on. I need 150 feet of fencing. By the way, is this, what's this measuring? Oh, <laughs> what's this measuring right here? Is it area? Is it perimeter? Is it circumference? What is it? Hopefully you know that that's going to be the perimeter. Perimeter. There's a couple ways and reasons I know. You could use the definition of perimeter, and that would be uh, the distance around a polygon. And we're enclosing a rectangle, so that's perimeter. You could also say, you know what, the units here are to the first power, aren't they? Feet are the first power. That's a measure of distance, which is perimeter. If it was squared, it would be area. If it was cubed, it would be volume. All right. So, we know that the length is one more than four times the width. Well, what do you want to call the width? All right, we'll call the width W. Now, we need the length to be one more than four times the width. Well, four times the width... is 4w, and um, sorry about that. I confused myself for a second. So 4w is 4 times the width, and I need one more. Now, since we're talking about perimeter, I need to add up all four sides, right? And this end actually will end up being a linear situation. I'll get 10w plus 2. And that will equal um, 150. And so if I solve that, I'll get 10w will equal uh, 148. So then w will equal 14 and 8 tenths feet. Okay. So that equals 14 and 8 tenths. Now, if you want to convert that to inches, you would need 80% of 12, right? So if I did 12 times 0.8, right, I'll get 6, I'll get a 1, a 9, and so I'll get 9, uh, nine and 6 tenths inches. Okay, but we can go ahead with the decimal here. That's fine. All right, now this one, I'm going to have to multiply by 4 and then add 1 to it. All right, and we'll do that, and we'll see if it works here. All right, so I'm going to do 14 and 8 tenths times 4 plus 1, and I'm going to get 60 and 2 tenths feet. All right, and I'll do that doubled plus the 14 and 8 tenths doubled. And when I checked it on my calculator, sure enough, it came out to be 150. So those are the dimensions of the yard, 60 and 2 tenths feet by 14 and 8 tenths feet. Okay, uh, if it had been an area problem, it would have been a FOIL situation. I'd multiply them together. We'll look at some of those in class tomorrow. All right, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.